This 5-in-1 nozzle by Rust-Oleum is probably the biggest change that most of us will see in our lifetime to anything related to spray paint. But the question is, is it any good? Not only that, but there's something fishy going on with the product reviews on not only this product, but on lots of products across the Lowe's and Home Depot websites. More on that toward the end of the video. Let's start by taking a closer look at what these five nozzles are for. The first nozzle here is a high output nozzle. It's supposed to allow you to get even more paint out onto the surface and it's ideal for rounded objects supposedly. The second one is standard. This is basically what we're used to and have been using all our lives. Third is the low output option and this is meant to help us with detailed areas where we need a light layer or anytime we need a light first layer to coat something before we get into regular layers. Fourth is the vertical fan which is ideal for doing wide flat horizontal areas and then fifth is the horizontal fan for doing wide flat vertical areas. These last two fan options are definitely more reminiscent of a traditional HPLV sprayer if you've ever used one of those with a hose it gives you a nice wide fan in one direction or the other. And lastly because there's no traditional lid on this to protect the buttons from being pressed accidentally there's also the lock position to make it so that you can't hit the button without meaning to. Rust-Oleum has laid out not only a bunch of samples of how you can use these as far as a list of different projects that you might use these for or applications but also some quick sample videos to show you where you might use one setting over the other. As far as pricing is concerned these cans are typically about one dollar more than the traditional cans that are the same exact paint but without the five-in-one nozzle. So you do pay a little bit more but I think a dollar is pretty reasonable especially if it works as expected. Now on that note if you check out the reviews on the website you're going to find a lot of great reviews for this people really enjoying it and you're going to find a lot of people who think that it's just not working at all. They talk about drips and leaking and sputtering and dropping big drips onto their projects and making it essentially useless. So I wanted to find out for myself if this was actually useful and if I'm going to run into those issues that people have mentioned. In order to test this out I went to the thrift store and purchased this super sweet globe here. I kind of always wanted one of these. I don't know if uh, that's just me. I always see the ones in the movies where they, they open up and there's a bar in here and stuff like that. This is not that fancy or anything like that but it's a pretty cool spinning globe and we thought it'd be fun to place a little stamp or a little pin on all the places that we've been to. So this one was marked down to 10 bucks, marked down five times actually, but it's got some serious issues with the finish. In fact, this stuff is literally peeling off right now as I touch it. So this needs a touch up, some sanding, and then some finishing. So we're gonna try out the different nozzles on the flat sections, the spindles, the horizontal sections. We'll get a chance to use most, if not all of the nozzles on this. Now, in addition, it's broken. This thing doesn't, it's missing a huge part on the bottom here. And fortunately, I have 3D modeling software that I'm getting better and better at learning how to use. And then I have lots of 3D printers. So I'm going to 3D print some parts to get this going as well. But mostly, I'm here to test out the 5-in-1 nozzle. And let's give it a go on this guy and see how it works. Those issues I mentioned about the sputtering and the leaking and everything, I have a feeling a lot of that may be due to improper use of the can itself. It could be that if it's tilted in the wrong way or people are trying to use it upside down, or even kind of flat or diagonal like that. That could be part of the issue. I'm not sure. But what I'm going to try to do is use the nozzles exactly the way they were intended to make sure I can keep this can about as upright as possible so that the aerosol can do its job properly. We'll see if that helps and maybe it won't. There's no sponsor on this video. I'm not being paid to do anything here. This is just me trying to find out if this is a legitimate product and if this nozzle is really worth getting or worth paying that extra buck for. After a thorough cleaning and then a light sanding all over, we're ready to do a test in a less visible area, like here on the bottom. Everything's looking good there. According to Rust-Oleum, the horizontal fan should be ideal for these vertical spindles, but as you can see here, it feels like that's just wasting a lot of paint. I'm finding that the traditional spray nozzle actually works better for this and has less waste. I do, however, like using the vertical fan for these wider areas, like here on the base and along this top ring. I can cover more area in less time with little to no waste. So far, so good.
In order to test out the high output, I needed something that had a little bit more of a large round surface, which is what they recommend for it. Now this actually doesn't even need painting, but I thought I'd use this dust collection cover for a 55 gallon drum, and this will work out really well for just testing if I can cover this really nicely. Now again, this is plastic, it's in good shape. This is really just to see how the high output works and if I can get nice, even coverage in a large area in less amount of time, basically. That's all I'm looking for. So I wanna see if this works, and based on what I'm seeing, this really puts out a lot of paint. In fact, I suspect I can go through a lot of this can in no time if I'm not careful. I think I would generally reserve this for anything where you're not at all worried about drips. So if you can spray this down onto a flat surface where it's able to sit a little bit with that thicker coat, then that high output I think would work really well. The low output I could see being really useful for detailed work, for anything where you have to get multiple angles for example and move the can around a lot without wanting it to cake up and layer up and then drip. So the low output would be really good for coverage of that sort of a scenario. I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. This actually worked out a lot better than I would have expected. I kind of thought maybe this was a little gimmicky, but each of the nozzles worked as advertised. One of the things that surprised me on this was that using the low output nozzle actually was really handy for getting these more tight areas, for example. Let's say you sprayed from one angle and then you need to get another angle, but you don't wanna like double it up on the first part and just do a light coat on the second part. You can actually use the light coat to kind of specify or get right in that target area wherever you need to and not be caking the thing in paint, which is really handy. So I use that on these little ridges that are cut out right here on the routered edge right here, and then along these edges here, all the little uh, turned knobs and nodules there. It worked out really well. Now if you don't use the entire can, it would be a good idea to just touch these nozzles up. They do get a little buildup on them, which is common for any sort of spray can, but you wanna knock those out with some denatured alcohol, something like that maybe, and then just clean those up a little bit so that the next time they're ready to go. Future Nils here, I'm so glad my buddy just came over because I remember I was gonna try to see if you can actually take this off and use it on a different can, and I totally forgot it. So I finished making the video, edited the whole thing, exported it, and then my buddy came over and said, hey, you should try that, and I was like, ugh, I totally spaced that. So, guess what? You can, check this out. So this is the original can right here that I just used for this project, and it's pretty much empty. There's a little left in there. And then this is a bare paint and primer can that I was able to swap it out. A little ugly, I've got some little uh, pry marks on here because these are tough to get the lids off, but the circumference or the diameter of the interior ring that this actually snaps down onto appears to be the same across brands. And I think that's pretty universal. They didn't use anything proprietary from what I could tell here. So that's a pretty big bonus. You could actually take this thing off of one existing can that you paid a buck or a buck 50 more for, and then swap it out and use it on something else. So, so if you can keep these uh, lenses as it were, these different nozzles clean, then I think you could reuse this over and over on different cans pretty successfully. I think that's pretty rad. I mentioned at the top of the video that I was a little skeptical because of the reviews. I saw a lot of reviews where the cans were like leaking all over the place and sputtering and people were having issues. But the reason I was so skeptical was because, as I mentioned at the top of the video, I discovered some things that were a little fishy on the Home Depot reviews and on the Lowe's reviews, not just for these spray cans, but also for a bunch of different products, including some really high dollar products. And as I got further and further down the rabbit hole on this, I realized there's a lot here. There's something that just doesn't quite add up. And so I compared their review ratings and their systems and how they do things compared to what Amazon has done. And I found that it was kind of apples and oranges the way they handle things, which could really throw off your confidence in the ratings on these sites. So much so that I found that I needed to put all of this in its own video. I promise there's some pretty interesting stuff in there that you're not gonna wanna miss. You can check out that whole story in this video right here and see how it all started by researching these spray paint cans and what people liked and didn't like about them and why some people like them a lot more than others. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.